I think we're live. Uh, let me just check on YouTube. I think we should be live. So welcome everyone. We started just a bit early. I just finished watching. Uh, hey, well, hello everyone. Where should I even start? So, yeah, we have uh, the first round of the presidential election. Uh, you can see on your screen already uh, how it's gonna happen. We're gonna talk about that. Uh, of course, since uh, so we already know nobody got over 50%, which wasn't even expected. It never happened. So we'll have a second round with the two leading candidates going into second round. Um, let me quickly just pause the fact that I'm streaming. Um, and yeah, so what we're going to talk about today. So, uh, yeah, we'll cover the results. Uh, what else did I want to cover? We'll, uh, we'll talk about my impression. So for those who don't know, I was in a voting commission, uh, in a local voting commission it means I would like oversaw, uh, the voting process. We counted the votes. Uh, I came home about an hour ago, so uh, I think it took us like half an hour to like count the votes and like do all the procedural stuff. And then we had to be there for I think like an hour long until we got a confirmation that uh, okay, the, they received our votes and we can go. Uh, so while we were waiting, I was watching. Uh, Actually, they counted the uh, votes in all of Slovakia. Why the delay? Twenty minutes. What happened? Oh, uh, I think I, 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 uh, I. What's the word? I misread the information. So it wasn't the the polls are going to be closed. In, well, there was one place where the polls are gonna close later, or like a couple places. Because uh, I think someone got hurt or a member of commission got sick or something like during it. So they had to close the polls for uh, uh, for a bit like those 20-30 minutes. Which means they had to extend it just so the full amount. So they have the equal time as everyone else. Uh, so but that was only in some local places. But uh, the 20 minutes, uh, which was actually half an hour at the end, still implied and it applied to moratorium. So uh, no results could be published uh, until that half an hour. So the first results we got were at like uh, 10 p.m., like, uh, I don't know, 45 or something like that. I think the first results I checked. Uh, and yeah, it was super quick. I mean remembering f from last election we were here or at least i was up until like 3 to 4 a.m and we still had like no idea what's gonna happen because the system failed but now it's all uh, it's 1 a.m and we already have 99.8 percent so uh pretty much everything although they're still counting the major places uh the biggest uh cities um okay what should we what should we cover first uh any 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 other question okay delay um uh, i think there was one more thing i wanted to cover let me just quickly check what, what did they say i'm gonna cover uh how the election went oh yeah so uh yeah let's just do like procedural stuff so uh one member of a commission was drunk uh not like in mine i mean just like uh, in some commission somewhere was drunk so that happened um, couple nice stories I saw a story about 101 year old uh, grandma Ali uh, voting and she said she never missed an election uh, what else story? nothing uh, crazy happened really although uh, as I said there were some uh, either people either got sick or hurt or something happened so uh but nothing too bad um and i think that's about it so it, it went really nicely in general uh nothing really crazy happened so all good um 
now okay let me do a quick experience of election commission uh, before we talk about the election so i wrote a couple of notes okay not a lot uh okay i don't know how much i i, I don't want to talk much about the experience like of the people I met there, I feel, feel like that's uh, from something else. So I'll just uh, kind of talk about what I did. So yeah, we had to. So basically, the polls opened from had to be open from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, and as I said in a couple places, that it, it was extended until or, or like half an hour more. Um, so we had to be there at six to prepare. Uh, so I had to wake up at like 5.30 or something to go there. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so yeah, I, I went there. Uh, how was the setup? So yeah, once we all kind of got in, <clears throat> we had to prepare the boxes. Uh, so like the, the boxes you put your votes in, the ballots. Uh, or wait, is ballot the thing you write on or... Uh, a ballot box, yeah, so ballot is what you write on. So we had to prepare those boxes, like put them together, basically, uh, and seal them uh, with the tape. Uh, so we all like oversaw, okay, we are sealing this, there's nothing there before. Uh, we put it there, everyone is overseeing, there, there were eight of us there. Um, uh, so we also, there were like a couple other boxes. Uh, just like for different stuff uh there was one especially that uh later uh during like evening uh a couple of us went around the town to be uh basically i think mostly to visit old people who uh let us know beforehand that they cannot physically come in because you know they are either too sick or too ill but they still wanted to vote so we went to them um what else what else what else was like interesting so yeah uh staying there for 15 hours was a bit crazy we all got like one hour off twice so during like lunch i went home I, uh, and i took a nap uh because I, I otherwise couldn't handle it and even now i'm super sleepy so i'm not sure how long we'll go on and i'm kind of losing my voice um and then at the second time I went home and I ate. Uh, so there was a nice dinner I had. Um, pa, 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 what else? Uh, okay, nothing. And so yeah, so basically what we did, I mean the major was, uh, the major thing was just like overseeing everything. Uh, so people came in, they gave us their ID. Uh, we would find them on the list. Uh, and you know they would sign in that they received the 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 ballot they went behind like a thing that people couldn't see uh they wrote in their thing and then they put in the box put it in the box in front of uh, everyone uh n nothing really uh, exciting or wrong happened there it all went fine uh we had a couple of people coming out of town which was interesting because i could see uh, the process of, because uh, usually you have to vote uh, where your, uh, uh, what you call it, where your like home address is, or where you legally are living. Uh, but if you get a voter's pass, you can just go anywhere, and uh, and they take it from you uh, after you vote, so you cannot like go to multiple places or something like that uh we had i think oh maybe maybe if i can find uh our town i could show it to you although that would mean okay let me put it on the separate screen because that would show what my town is uh and i'm not sure how much public i want that to be so let me see if I can find it and maybe just put the picture on. Oh, I'm just trying to remember where exactly it is. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. Can I? Oh, here it is. 
Let's see if they have, like, specifically us. Oh, it doesn't look like they have. I don't think they, like, loaded in yet. Uh, yeah, so we cannot see... We cannot see specific numbers yet. Uh, that's unfortunate. Uh, alright, what else? Anything crazy that happened? I mean, I, I think there are a couple of, like, stories I could tell about, like, the people there and, like, the things we kind of talked about. Uh, but that's not really important here. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, and I voted. I was one of the first people who voted there. So I was glad. And the general, uh, I mean, if I cannot uh, find the results... Uh, from us i was genuinely surprised i think the uh the votes uh in my uh village went nicer than expected i wasn't expecting it to go that well uh i think we had turn out at your polling station uh what was it so a total number of people who could vote was like 400 and we had 252 people who went to vote. Uh, we only had 251 actual... And I hope I can talk about it. I mean, that's public knowledge. Uh, I mean, will be public knowledge, so hopefully I can mention it. Uh, <clears throat> and we had one uh, invalid vote. Uh, basically, someone took the thing and didn't circle anyone. Uh, and they put it in the ballot box, so... Uh, obviously we don't know who, uh, but someone decided, uh, I don't know, maybe they <laughs> forgot or something, or <clears throat> maybe it was like a protest vote. <clears throat> but yeah, we had one percent uh, where it was an invalid vote. Broken pen, I mean, I, I would hope they would like say something, uh, and uh, people were still there after the well, I'm assuming someone. Maybe that was the last person who was there. They had a broken pen and didn't say anything. And then we didn't notice because there was no one after them. Uh, but yeah, okay. So then, yeah, after we finished, we locked the room. Uh, <clears throat> we had like a manual on how to do everything. And I think a couple of people there already did this. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, we locked the room. We, I'm trying to remember how it went. So first we opened all the, all the, all the basically letters, uh, like, because they are sealed, like even not just the box. So we opened the box, we put everything in the middle, all the votes, and then the, the, those like ballots are in like sealed thing, a uh, post card, or I don't know what to call it. Uh, post mail uh, or something uh, So we have ha had to open all of that so we did that first and count it if we have if the votes uh, Are equal to the amount of people who went to vote. Uh, we had no issues there Then uh, So first uh, first we counted everything then oh what did we did then 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 we counted if all the votes are legal, uh, so if they don't have an issue with them, and then we counted the individual candidates. Uh, okay, uh, I think that's about it from the stories of how it happened. So overall, I think it's like an interesting experience. Uh, I don't think it's <laughs> worth it at all, uh, at least for me. Uh, but I'll have to go one more time for the second round, uh, which uh, might be more interesting since it's just two people. Uh, it's just two candidates. Um, all right, let's talk about the actual elections. Uh, I think that's, uh, unless anyone has questions, I think that's pretty much all from... Uh, from my experience so yeah overall uh overall not bad interesting experience but uh, we stayed there too long and uh, there were a couple of stretches of hours where no one came uh so it, 
it, it could get pretty boring. Uh, although I spent most of the time when no one was there just listening to either music or uh, a book I'm listening to right now. Alright, let's talk about the votes. Uh, wait, can, you, can I check? Well, trying to remember, did I do an episode about... No, I just did a news update, so I didn't do anything about the presidential candidates. Um... All right, let's just do a quick rundown. Uh, I'm wondering to what extent. Okay, we'll only talk about the relevant parties. I don't want to talk about everyone. Um, so yeah, the main candidates are obviously Ivan Korchok and Peter Pellegrini. Peter Pellegrini is a chairman uh, of the of the parliament. Uh, and uh, is the second biggest party in the coalition currently, uh, and he is also the leader of the he, uh, he, the second biggest party in in government, third biggest party in parliament, voice. Uh, so he's a candidate of that party, and his main opponent, uh, as it turned out, uh, and it was expected, uh, is Ivan Korchuk. He's independent, but he has an endorsement of many parties mainly from opposition and then the pretty much the second is uh, Stefan Harabin uh, he's also independent I'm not sure if he has endorsement of any parties actually uh, although he has endorsement of Andrei Danko who is the chairman of a Slovak National Party uh, but I'm not sure if Slovak National Party uh, as it stands officially endorsed uh, Stefan Harabin Especially since it would be weird since uh, Slovak National Party is in the coalition with voice and generally a government coalition doesn't have different candidates running against each other. Uh, yeah, it promotes a pretty bad blood. Um, uh, I'm wondering if I can find polls so we could discuss them in this context. Because I think uh, polls were telling a pretty interesting story and some people were getting pessimistic uh, I think when we talk about the second round we might still be pessimistic but uh, uh, what am I looking for uh, poof, I'm completely lost uh, what am I looking for oh here it is uh, or is it yes um, what what the uh, what uh, what is this? Uh, this is what is this? When when is this? <laughs> uh, okay, this is from this is from five days ago. Uh, I'd rather see. I'd much rather see overall time over a period of time does every party put up a candidate uh, you know what let me actually I think it's better if I just show it here uh, so it generally it depends uh, but when we talk about uh, Uh, I'm sorry, someone walked in. Uh, so when we talk about uh, Pellegrini, so he's the... Oh yeah, oh here it actually says pretty nice. So affiliation, he is the chairman of the Voice Social Democracy and he got endorsement from uh, Direction Social Democracy. Those two are the current governing parties in Slovakia. Uh, so he is like the candidate for them. Then we have... Uh, Ivan Korchok, he went as independent, uh, but he got the uh, endorsement. I think he got first endorsement from Progressive Slovakia, then Freedom and Solidarity, and eventually he got even endorsement from Christian Democratic Movement. The Christian Democratic Movement were thinking about putting that out their own candidates, uh, but at the end chose to endorse Ivan Korchok. Uh, Stefan Harabin, then he also ran this independent. Okay, uh, I, uh, here it says he, he 
got an endorsement from Slovak National Party. Uh, and then the only interesting after that is, for example, uh, Christian Foro, who is affiliated with Hungarian Alliance. Uh, generally, I think this election was special in that a lot of people actually had political parties behind them. Uh, usually, or, or rather, are affiliated with uh, with political parties. Usually, mostly uh, presidential candidates are running as independents. Uh, presidential role in Slovakia is viewed as something that shouldn't really have a party affiliation. Uh, so that's why usually it happens like that. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna talk about the votes here. I'm I'm really tired. I might not keep this for long. Uh, uh, so yeah, we had Ivan Korchung, who I voted for, and I think uh, is definitely the best gun candidate out of here. Even though, uh, if I had to give you like an, you know, the kind of objectivist reason for voting for him. I would kind of struggle, uh, it's very much like a contextual vote, but it's also not like bad, uh, I, uh, it's something a bit annoying, I cannot really, uh, I mean, good thing is I cannot really find anything bad about him, but the, uh, the bad thing is I, I'm struggling to find, uh, and it, I don't want to say anything good about him. Like, he, he definitely has, like, things I would want in, like, a president. Uh, but I'm just kind of... Uh, maybe I'm just not sure what exactly I want from a president of uh, of Slovakia. That's why I'm, I'm not really sure what I'm looking for. Like, when I look at him, I'm kind of like... Yeah, out of all these candidates, he's clearly the best choice. But I'm struggling sometimes to find a principle in why exactly is that. Is Ukraine an issue? I'm confused by Google. Can take which candidate I think about Ukraine. Um, so in so Ukraine is definitely a topic. Uh, was a, yeah, de definitely a big topic. Uh, still is. Uh, so I mean, let, let's just compare Korchuk and Pellegrini. The stance of Korchuk is pretty much, um, yeah, Ukraine has a right to defend itself and uh, shoot as long uh, as long as it wants to fight for, we should support it. Uh, definitely, like, morally, I'm not sure if he would say it like that, but definitely, like, giving them, you know, moral support. Uh, and uh, I, I don't know to what extent he's, like, military support, but I, I, I believe he is like even for military or humanitarian support. While Peter Pellegrini is much more like, well, you know, people are dying and nothing is being solved, so we should try to have peace. Uh, which uh, is, it, you know, very cowardly uh, way to think about it, or very like unprincipled way to think about it. And Stefan Harabin is similar way. Uh, he doesn't even consider it the war. He says like, uh, he doesn't even consider the invasion of Ukraine a war. Uh, uh, sorry, but I don't think it's like a deciding topic uh, in this election. Uh, there is no real like one issue. Maybe in this, uh, so basically we had the first round. In two weeks we have the second round. Uh, there was no like deciding issue in the first round. We might see something in the second round, but uh, nothing is there so far. I mean, we have no real data about coming to the second round, so we'll see where it goes. Um, but yeah, so what surprised me about this one is uh, Peter Pellegrini was supposed to win first round. Uh, not win it by a lot, but he was definitely supposed to win. What turned out is that he lost, and he lost by a lot. He lost by 54 five percent that's uh it yeah, that's 120 thousand uh votes that's no small that's a pretty good lead uh but now coming to the second round is it going to be enough the problem is of course Stefan harabin 
his voters are uh, I think in the last poll we saw 9 to 1 in favor of Pellegrini so if all those votes went here uh, he's pretty close to 50% why was he expected to win uh, I mean polling data uh, I'm not sure what exactly are you looking for with why uh, he has the endorsement of the parties that are still popular now uh, because he's in the government uh, not really I mean he has the if you count the 37% uh, it's basically pretty much if you count people who voted for direction social democracy and voice social democracy this is it this is the 37 percent uh wait uh, am i peaking am i too loud uh let me know if i'm too loud because i think i just saw my thing peak um so it's just the parties that endorse me, uh, the people of the parties that endorse him are voting for him uh fine okay uh one thing well, i'll, I'll want to talk about that later when we come to second round uh but so he was and uh yeah i'm clearly surprised by because uh people were already pretty pessimistic about the chances of ivan korchak uh this win definitely gave uh everyone a lot of fuel even ivan korchak himself uh we'll see if this can lead him into winning the second round he needs um he needs a good amount of people and uh pretty uh, most of the candidates here are much more uh supportive of peter peregrini and as we saw the turnout it's actually the turnout was higher in the places where people would vote for ivan korchok so i think he managed to mobilize a lot of people but the problem is uh, those people have to come to the second round and he needs more people still while Pellegrini has still a lot of people he could potentially mobilize uh, so I'm not too optimistic about the second round I think it could pretty much still go either way we have to see we have to see what uh, the other candidates who will they endorse and we can talk about that a little bit and uh, yeah how if people get discouraged because in the last election the the voter base of Stefan Harabin pretty much didn't go to vote uh, voting uh, polls at all uh, they pretty much completely gave up which gave rise to uh, our last president Zuzana Chaputova uh, but we might not see a similar thing if they come it, it, it could go either way and uh, that's why uh, surprisingly we saw Ivan Korchok, uh, Korchok talking to the voters of Stefan Harabin basically trying to talk them into yeah m at least with me you know what you have uh, with Pellegrini you'll have no idea what you'll get so uh, we'll see who will endorse who we'll see how it goes uh, all right any questions from uh, from anyone because uh, I, I think uh, I pretty much covered everything that I wanted to cover. Um, oh, and I'm super tired. How much power does the position of president have? Uh, not much. Uh, as with all parliamentary democracies, it is mostly ceremoni ceremonial. Although a president can veto votes. Uh, I mean, uh, can veto laws. Uh, which would mean uh, normally the votes have to be passed just by I'm trying to find the word for it. I think it's qualitative majority which means uh, not uh, so we have a parliament of 150 people a qualitative majority doesn't mean 76 votes it means 50% uh, plus one of people currently in parliament so if there is a session and there is just 120 people there you just need 61 votes to pass a normal law uh, if you do it and uh, and a president vetoes it then you need the actual majority which is 76 votes so it's uh, it's not a strong power it's a decent 
Um, the second thing a president can do when it comes to this sort of like legislate or like ba uh, ba yeah, balance of powers, I guess, uh, or separation of powers, he can, uh, president can also give uh, the the law to the to the well not the supreme court we don't call it that. uh the constitutional court to overview which is actually what's happening right now uh there was a new penal code that was supposed to be passed and mr president gave it to the constitutional court uh to base to basically challenge it which i think was the right decision uh i think we talked about it in the last news roundup um uh that uh, and, and I think those, at, at least to me, are most uh, important. Uh, of course, there's the representative role, uh, the fact that the president sort of like, uh, this is, I, I wouldn't call this like an actual power that is that, but uh, you know, the fact that you are president gives you a certain, uh, you know, people know who you are, <laughs> so you can inspire uh, the what's to being talked about in the public. Or what's like the kind of part of the uh, public discourse? Will you do a show after the runoff? Um, I'm, I mean, probably. I mean, similar to this one, uh, most likely. I'll be in the voting commission in the second round as well. Uh, so assuming I get home at a similar time and... Uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm assuming so. Uh, but again, it's uh, it, it might also not be as long as I said. Uh, <laughs> it's a uh, it's a pretty long day. Uh, all right. Uh, any other questions? I'm gonna give you like a minute, and I think I'm gonna wrap up. Uh, just overall impressions. I'm 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 pretty happy. It was an interesting experience to work there um thanks for the update get some sleep now you look knackered i had to run in the rain uh home so i also got the uh, <coughs> uh yeah, even my voice isn't the greatest uh all right it seems like no one has any questions so uh this was a click live stream just a quick update uh hopefully we'll see Hopefully this election will go well for 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 what I think is the for what I think would be good. Uh, otherwise, uh, we are if the wrong side wins, we are in for some really rough years. So I'm really hoping in this one, uh, and hopefully the right side wins. So thank you everyone for watching. I'll see you in two weeks most likely maybe earlier if something uh, really crazy happens that uh, has to be talked about uh, maybe some really good data or some polls or something uh, but in the meantime thank you everyone and bye bye